Neil Monroe stars as Quentin Nichols in The Hog's Hollow Mystery with Sarah Orenstein and Peter Millard. Look around you, Quentin. See how all the gentlemen are dressed in those same old tailcoats that they've been wearing for absolutely years. They look like a community of penguins, I'd say. Mm-hmm. While you, my dear, in that new dinner suit I ordered for you, have surpassed them all. You are in the forefront of fashion. This new design is being called a tuxedo. The name is from somewhere around New York City. Tuxedo Park. A fine tweed was good enough for my old dad. Oh, but he was not attending the social event of the year. Toronto's upper crust are certainly well represented here, aren't they? Uh-oh, Inspector. Chief Constable Lemon. Mm. Too late. He spotted you. Oh, good evening, Doctor. My, you look perfectly lovely tonight, Abby. Oh, why, thank you, Chief Constable. And Mr. Wellington, your story's going well? Still spreading the Inspector's fame far and wide? Actually, I just sold an Inspector Nichols mystery to a Fleet Street publishing house. And you, Inspector, you look particularly dashing tonight. Out of your tweeds for a change and into some of this newfangled bib and tucker, eh? Well, coming up to the turn of the century, sir. Let's let the world know the law keepers are up to date. <laughs> I didn't know modernity was your sort of thing, Nichols. <laughs> oh, where are my manners? May I present Mr. Jason Peabody of Peabody and Sons? Uh, Jason, Dr. Abby LaPierre, Inspector Quentin Nichols, and Daniel Wellington. How do you do? Oh, nice to meet you. How do you do, sir? Are you just visiting, Mr. Peabody, or are you a resident? Actually, I spend most of my time in Petrolia in Ontario West, huh. but uh, I do keep rooms in the city now. And uh, your line of business, sir? A geologist by trade, and uh, I invest. But I confess I do spend too much time on safari these days. The dark continent holds a special attraction for me. Elephant hunting is my sport. Yes, Jason is an excellent shot. Uh, um, but I must discuss some police business with our inspector. Oh, please do proceed. Doctor, mm-hmm. may I get you some punch? Oh, why, thank you. Nichols, seems a body was discovered this evening up in Hogs Hollow. Foul play, they say. Ah, well, yes, I'll, I'll get up there too sweet. Nonsense. It's raining and too dark to see anything. I have two men guarding it. I'll see you up there in the morning. young girl of blueberry picking found him, hands and feet tied, and a bullet hole behind his left ear. Hmm. Powder burns, a cold-blooded execution. And this chap still has his pocket watch, a note case, so we can rule out robbery. Let's see what's in here. Name, Ivan Skolnick. And a sizable wad of cash. Girl who found him said he worked for Heber's hog farm. In fact, this is Jackie Heber's land. Hmm. Absence of blood, meaning he wasn't killed here. What do you think, Abby? You're right. With that exit wound over the right orbit, there should be brain tissue and bone matter everywhere. Well, what are these marks on his arms? Uh, a row of puncture wounds. And they bled, so they occurred before he was killed. Could he have been tortured? No, I doubt it. Too even. Looks like he was hit with a board with nails driven into it every inch or so. Here, in his scalp, a further set of puncture wounds. Well, since he's out of Toronto jurisdiction, would you do the honours, Doctor? I take it you mean the autopsy? Uh, Wellington and I will go and see this farm, talk to his boss, see what we can find out. Well, keep me informed. Thank you. Uh, no, no sugar, Mrs. Heber. So, how long has Ivan Skolnick worked for you? About a month. Uh, did he have any enemies? No, I don't think so, but I wasn't involved in his life. He did his work and stayed in a bunkhouse. I see. Any bad habits, drinking, gambling, women, you know? Do you classify women as a bad habit, Inspector? Uh, no, I, I, I meant women of, um, well, uh, somewhat easy virtue. What he did in the city was his business. I hired him for general work, feeding pigs, getting them ready for market. Was he chummy with any of your other hands? You can talk to Seth Fraser, my manager, but I think he kept to himself. 
Like I said, he was paid on Saturday morning and headed out to Toronto. Yes. Well, very well, madam. We'll find the culprits. And now, if you don't mind, my man and I will have a quick look around where he bunked. <clears throat> Smell of piggies everywhere. What about the manager? Uh, not much from him. He just strode in after we arrived. Seemed a bit nervous. And he's carrying a rifle about. A rifle, eh? Well, just clothes and shaving kits in here. Let's uh, check the trunk. Well, look at this. A twin gun belt and walnut grip forty fives. Serious tools. Holsters soaked in brine to stiffen them. Oiled leather inside, gun sights filed off for a quick draw. What, you're saying he was a gunman? Well, a long way from a pig minder. This is a close-range rig. Oh, I, I didn't know you were still here. Uh, Seth Fraser, this is Inspector Nichols. Afternoon, Mr. Fraser. How are you? I was just going to clean out his gear and send it to his sister out west. Alberta? Uh, no, he came from the Arizona Territory. Arizona? Long way from home. Yeah. Uh, my friend here says his weapons show that he may have been a professional gunman. I wouldn't know. He's just a hired hand around here. I see you're carrying a carbine, Mr. Fraser. Afraid of an uprising of mad pigs or the like? <laughs> no, I spotted a bear the other day and just being cautious. Oh, good. A man can never be too cautious, as Mr. Skolnick found out to his great misfortune. Almost finished, Quentin. Then I'll have to clean up Dr. Fenway's clinic before he gets back. But first, I'll close the cavity and then show you something of interest. Look here. Note the lividity of the lower limbs and the ligature marks around his throat. My lord. Mm -hmm. He's been hanged. Hanged first and left for hours and hours. Then he was taken down and shot. And I'd guess the puncture wounds we found on his arms were defensive. Someone attacked him with something before he was killed. Yes, but why shoot him after he was dead? Anything else? Mm -hmm. Two scars, upper torso and left leg. He's been shot twice at different times. Must have led an interesting life. Inspector, Constable Riggs asked me to fetch you. Seems there's another fellow who's been shot. I think he's dead, but they're bringing him here to the clinic anyhow. Bob, what the hell is going on now? Who are these men? I'm Mr. Layton, I presume? Yeah, Ike Layton. I own this place. Who are you? Inspector Quentin Nichols of the Ontario Constabulary, sir. This is my assistant, Daniel Wellington. Oh, how are you? I suppose Constable Riggs has finally sent for someone to do something about the cattle rustling, eh? Cattle rustling? Um, uh, no, no. I'm sorry to inform you, sir, that one of your hands was found shot this afternoon, about two miles from here. He didn't survive. Those bastards. What bastards? Well, whoever did it. Who was killed? Well, uh, Bob here identified him as Brett Forbes. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you a few questions. Uh, Jesus. Well, maybe you should be questioning people over at Heber's Hog Farm. How oh, so? Never mind. Let's go inside. No, 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 Mr. Layton. Let's not be coy. If you know something about this murder, I want to know it. Forthwith, if you please. Sorry, Inspector. I shot off my mouth before thinking. It's just... Well... Just we've had some cattle rustling going on, and... Now this. And why did you mention Heber's hog farm? I had some difficulties with them. I wanted to expand this place and offered to buy them out fair and square, but they refused. I said I should get the hell out of the valley. This was pig's territory. Since then, the fences have been broken, cattle stolen, and now... Well, Mr. Layton, misery does love company. Last night, one of Mrs. Heber's farm hands was found beaten, hanged, and with half his head shot off, so... Tell me this, sir. Is there something going on in Hogs Hollow that the police should know about? Mrs. Heber, there's obviously some bad blood between you and Mr. Layton. And now I have two murders, one from each crew to investigate, and neither of you seems very forthcoming. Inspector, do you know how many hog carcasses were shipped by the William Davies Company of Toronto to Great Britain last year? I have no idea. More than 400,000. That's why we're known as Hogtown. Mr. Layton seems to think that he's about to turn this into Cattle Town, USA. I simply said, no sale. Yes, of course, but I sense there's more here than meets the eye. 
Uh, my friend Mr. Wellington informs me that farm hands are paid $20 a week. They're usually paid Saturday. Saturday was when he was killed. Mr. Skolnick was carrying $200. You care to comment? Well, I- I'm a widow. I'm aware of that. <laughs> Why did you hire a gunfighter, Mrs. Eber? All right. I hired him because we've been having troubles around here. Go on. Gates to our pig pens have been opened at night. Two months ago, we had a fire in the feed bin. Then our water troughs were poisoned, and we lost 15 sows. Yes, and you think Leighton did this? Well, who else? So I wrote to my cousin. He lives out there where they have these disputes and know how to settle them. He sent Ivan. This is Canada, Mrs. Heber. Why didn't you go to the constable? Riggs. I did. He came down, had a look. Couldn't find any evidence of anything. Insinuated that we were being sloppy. Said what I needed was a man about the place to whip things into shape, damned insolence. All right, let's get to it. Did you have anything to do with the murder of Brett Forbes from Mr. Layton's place? There's a lot of bad feelings about I. Shall I take that as a yes, ma'am? No. We didn't do it. You asked Leighton if he murdered Ivan? He denied having anything to do with it. He claims his fences are regularly broken, and he's found his cattle on your land. Well, he can claim anything he wants. He's the one with the grand plans. Tell Mr. Leighton that, though I'm a woman, if he wants trouble, there's plenty more help I can get, and I won't be afraid to use it. Sounds like you're in the middle of a range war. Right. I have two murders and two murder suspects, and I can't tie either of them to the crime. Abby, when you did the autopsy on Forbes, were you able to establish time of death? With him, yes. Based on body temperature and the fact that rigor mortis was already evident when he came in, I guess that articulo, the moment of death, occurred between 9 and 10 this morning. Why? Wellington and I arrived at the Heber farm close to 10. Mrs. Heber was there. Mm. But her manager, Seth Fraser, only came in 15 minutes later. So he would have had time to bushwhack him. Yes, you know what sort of rifle he was carrying, Wellington? Uh, Winchester 94, 3030. Get a soft point bullet and cut an X on top, and it makes a hell of a hole in the man. Uh, pity your autopsy didn't find any slug. No, but I said it was a large caliber. Went right through him on a downward trajectory. Well, I'll visit the scene tomorrow and see if I can place the shooter. I wish they hadn't moved the body. I'd have had some chance of locating the slug that killed him. Uh, Constable Riggs wasn't sure that he was dead, and so they loaded him on a wagon. He'd been dead for hours when he arrived, and I must have a long talk with Constable Riggs about the importance of preserving the scene of a crime. (laughs) He's a dedicated fellow. He's probably still out burying the horse. Of course. Of course? Yes, Forbes' horse. My God, the slug's in the horse. Of course. Oh, there's his head and neck. Thank Providence for the moon. Yes, uh, bring the lantern closer, will you? Uh, it's impossible to see with all the dirt. We should have waited till daylight. If the horse was killed, he was hit, so the slug has to be in him. Mm. Now, you said it was a downward trajectory. How many degrees? From what I could see, if the victim was sitting straight up, it was near 45 degrees from entrance to exit. Oh, that's queer. Mm. So it probably entered the horse somewhere in his mane, which doesn't make things any easier. Oh, never mind. I'll feel around here. Look at my hand. Blood. Yep. Ah, I found the wound. Got my knife here. Any luck? Mother load luck. Here's your slug, Inspector. Excellent. Now, if it turns out to be a 30-30 caliber, we shall have a talk with Mr. Seth Fraser. Oh, that's no 30-30. Listen... Someone's coming. Quick, uh, blow out the lantern. Down to the road. Hold up there, you. In the name of the Queen. What? Who are you? Stand back, I'm armed. Ontario Constabulary. Dismount immediately, sir. Constabulary? Inspector Nichols, is that you? Mr. Peabody? What are you about up here? I'm heading back to Toronto. I just met with a man about investing in his cattle enterprise. Why are you prowling about in the night? Well, we're on a case, sir. Oh, that nasty murder business? Yes, and I'd be careful riding up here at night. Well, I didn't mean to leave so late. Perhaps it would be safer if we all ride in together? Well, just uh, admiring your spurs, glinting in the moonlight, sir. Last time I saw any like that was in Texas. Oh, not surprising. They're Mexican. Ah. The rowels are sharper and bigger than those up here. Yes, you know... 
This night reminds me of a time when I was in Scotland Yard. I remember there was still a great shortage of cadavers for medical schools. Quinton, I'm sure Mr. Peabody isn't interested. Naturally, when people's loved ones vanish, they're upset, you know. <laughs> Nichols, this fog is chilling me to the bone. The whole idea of body snatchers is, 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 is ludicrous. Shh, Sir Leonard, I've got 20 constables around the graveyard, so we'll get them tonight for sure. There must be another shortage of cadavers at the medical schools. But it hasn't been a problem for almost 40 years. In fact, since 1828. You remember? Burke and Hare. Yes, they sold bodies to the anatomy school of Dr. Robert Knox. I know, sir, but on my way back from Nellie's park... Ah, now the truth. Out. I've seen them here in Highgate Cemetery with shovels, digging. And when I approached them, they ran. But we haven't had any complaints of missing bodies. Well, let's just uh, keep walking, sir. Have you uh, any deceased loved ones, sir? Of course. Yes, and when was the last time you checked to ensure that they were safely tucked up in their grave? Oh, right? Lord, spare me. Why didn't you become a priest, a hermit, anything but a policeman? Uh, there, ahead. Did you see them digging? Good heavens. You're right, Nichols. I don't believe it. The signal to close in is a shot in the air. They are running, dodging, but they've got them. And the bloody great box. Ah, good night's work, sir. I'm speechless. Wait here. I'll talk to the constables. Yes, go well, uh, I'll enjoy a, a good cigar. Oh, uh, Sir Leonard, back so soon. Have we recovered a body? Several. Several? I find it strange they could run with several bodies. Oh, not a problem. They are worms. Worms, sir? Worms? Out of the ground? Yes. A box of dirt filled with worms for fishing. They say cemeteries yield fat, juicy, well-fed worms. Would you like to personally arrest them? Escort them into Scotland Yard? Uh, I think not, sir. Uh, the less said, the better. I'll toddle off home, if you don't mind. Yes, stay out of Nellie's and graveyards. It's a very simple question, sir. Did you poison the Heber water troughs? No. Uh, I don't know. Well, which is it, man? Yes or no? Well, maybe some of my men got carried away. I, I can't keep tabs on them all. But I didn't give any orders. Now... Have you found anything indicating she's been rustling my cattle? Because if she is... You'll do nothing. Now, do you know a Jason Peabody? Yes. Why do you ask? He said he met here with you a few nights ago. Well, he wanted to buy the place, but I told him again it's not for sale. He claims he had some deal with the former owner. What sort of deal? Apparently he did some sort of work here and discovered a gravel pit. He wants to buy it for its gravel. Look... I'm going to make this outfit work, and no one, especially some woman pig farmer, is going to stop me. Horse is buried over there, so he likely didn't bury it far from where Forbes was shot. Sure looks different in daylight. Yes. So the only place a killer could hide and shoot downward and hit a man dead center so the bullet went through him and into his horse's neck would be in this tree here, overhanging the trail. And look what I see up there. Ropes. Right. A rope hammock. In Spanish, a hammock in English. Part of the Mayan culture. Dates back centuries. Perfect way to conceal oneself in comfort. Wait for your victim. So, you know Heber has been rustling cattle. Leighton has likely been poisoning her pigs. But we still don't know who ambushed those men or why. Well, actually, as I discover each little piece of the puzzle, more and more of it all begins to make sense. Now, I need to see Abby and ask Mrs. Heber one question. Meanwhile, I want you to do a little job for me, and then we'll meet at the Jolly Miller, about six. Oh. What news, Abby? So nice to see you too, Quinton. Uh, well, uh, sorry. Hard day. Mm. Uh, did you find out anything? Yes. I took the slug to the gunsmith, as you asked, and he weighed and measured it, despite its sorry state. It's not a thirty-thirty. 
So Fraser is off the hook. Yes, granted. Well, what is it? He said it's likely a 450-400 slug, probably from a Jeffries rifle, one of only a few taking that caliber. I knew it. I'm off to see Mrs. Heber and then to meet Wellington at Leighton's. Uh, one more thing, Abby. Mm-hmm. Call Lemon and ask him to contact his friend Peabody. I shall meet the three of you at Fenway's clinic in Hogs Hollow at ten tonight. Peabody's a geologist, and I think we shall enlist his help to sort this one out. Quentin, whatever you're doing... <sighs> Be careful, please. You can always count on that. <sighs> Inspector, you're sort of late. Oh, sorry, Wellington. I had spent most of the afternoon in the company of two ladies to get what I needed. Well, I spent it with bugs. I did find something odd on Leighton's place near the Heber boundary, but it wasn't what you expected. Yes. No pit for gravel? No. Only thing out there other than grass and trees was some sort of knock-down TP rig. Lots of iron pieces. Somebody hid it all under a pile of brush. Want to take a look? We can just make it before dark. Right. Off we go. Might have been a drilling site for water. Yeah, rather elaborate setup. Hmm. Smell this dirt near the cap, Wellington. It smells like... Tar or pitch? Well, actually, it's neither. It's something people are now calling black gold. Why did you want Ike Layton to come with us? To attend a meeting. More to the point, where is he and his people at this time of night? I hope he's not at the Heber farm. Uh, We'll know in a minute. I meant to ask, what have you got in that canvas sack tied across your saddle back there? It's a surprise for the meeting tonight, if we can bring all parties together. Ah, you get your wish. Those shots are coming from the Heber farm up there. Damn it, right. Let's go. Clayton, put down your weapons, all of you. Consider yourselves under arrest. Put them down immediately. And the people inside the house do the same. I'm missing another four creatures, Nichols. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. And you won't have to, Mr. Layton. In fact, I'd like you and Mrs. Heber to come with me tonight. Oh, yes, and uh, Seth Fraser should join us, too. You see, this little war is at an end, and I shall happily explain why. Couldn't this wait till morning? Well, I'll sleep better if we wrap it up tonight, sir. I'm happy to help any way I can, Inspector. Oh, well, good. Perhaps you'd begin by telling me what this sample of dirt was soaked with. Just uh, smell it, sir. Well, that's oil. Crude oil. We have wells and petroleum where I live and nearby in oil springs. Yes, thank you. And as I understand it, the first commercial oil well in North America was drilled there in 1858. And now Ontario is furnishing more than 90% of North America's oil needs. Correct. And according to Mr. Layton and Mrs. Heber, you tried to buy both of their properties. Yes, I did. I'm a businessman and there's a gravel bed on their land. Plank and corduroy roads are coming to an end in Ontario because of the automobile. And roads are being upgraded with sand and gravel. It's not gravel you're after, Peabody. It's oil. Somehow you discovered an oil deposit in Hogs Hollow. So, when they wouldn't sell, you started to wage war on both parties, poisoning water troughs, breaking down fences, and rustling stock to set them at each other's throats. After a war with one or both of these people in jail, you could step in and buy the land for a pittance. Nonsense. You, sir, are also a murderer. You see, two things tie you to the murdered men. Uh, open the sack, Wellington. Right, here you go, Inspector. What? That's my rifle and my spurs. How, how did you... Uh, your you... landlady let me into your rooms today. Now, first of all, if I apply the rowels of your spurs to Mr. Skolnick's forearm wounds and roll them as though he was kicked... They fit perfectly. Yes. And my next exhibit... A Jeffrey's 450 400 rifle, an elephant gun, and the slug that comes from it, and which we dug out of Forbes' horse's neck. And finally, the rope sling you wove to sit in the tree and wait for your victim. A practice an African white hunter would use while waiting for his prey, would he not? In your case, you loved killing elephants, and it was an elephant gun that killed Forbes. He doesn't have any real proof. Ah, Mr. Fraser, the enemy within the camp. What? It's obvious that while you take Heber money, your loyalties are elsewhere. In fact, you were rustling the cattle and making sure Mrs. Heber never had a good house. I'm leaving. Now, you just set a spell and keep your hands where I can see them. You may be good with a long gun, but believe me, I'm better in here. Oh, Quentin, <laughs> careful. Here, pour it in here. 
Well, who would ever have guessed Jackie Heber and Ike Layton getting married? Yes, and in their case, it's also a merging of two large farms into one of the biggest and probably most profitable hog operations around. Why ever did Peabody think there was oil in Hogs Hollow? Well, because the prior owner of the Layton farm had arranged the drilling himself and salted the ground with crude. He gave Peabody false reports and was set to realize a handsome profit on his property when he had an accident. Then the bank took it over, sold it within a week to Leighton, foiling Peabody's plans. Both proved to be swindlers. Pity two innocent men had to die over nothing. Yes, that's the tragedy. Well, with the new bride and groom on their way to Niagara Falls, there's nothing left for us to do but uh, finish the champagne. And perhaps waltz the night away. Uh Uh-oh. Chief Constable Lemon is headed this way. Oh, and he's Lord. got that look in his eye again. Oh, no. Quick, steal me away to the dance floor. We'll be relatively safe there. Well, heavens, yes, all right. We can't dance forever. You know? <laughs> really? And who, my dear, made that 